Hello and welcome to this video for demonstration of the open daylight. So in, in this lab, we are going to install and download a little lab for open daylight. And also we will build a small uh, virtual lab using the Mininet and the obvious virtual switches which are being created inside the Mininet. And we will demonstrate how uh, open daylight will be able to communicate with Mininet and program the open flow based uh, OVS switches within the Mininate and how it will enable the communication between the host, the virtual host with, within inside the Mininet. Uh, for so those of you who are not familiar with Mininet, Mininet is a small packaged environment, lab environment for testing of uh, in general software defined networking. So it consists of like a virtual image, you can deploy it, you know, on any hypervisor, or you can just download it from, uh, from the source, you can build it. So it uses Linux namespaces and uh, OBS switches to create uh, multiple uh, virtual switches and create this virtual host within that and allows the open daylight or any other SDN controller to control the, uh, the flows within those uh, virtual switches using the open flow. So in this video, uh, we will go to, you know, the open daylight website, we will download the open daylight from there. We will put it on our machine, the machine which we have already prepared, uh, the open daylight machine, the virtual machine which we have. We will extract, run, and we'll also install the basic features on the open daylight. So open daylight, when it comes by default, you know, the main features are not enabled. So we have to enable those features by calling the install feature uh, on the open daylight console to install and enable the specific features. Uh, then we will access the Open Daylight uh, graphical user interface on the web interface. And from there, we will be able to see and demo how the communication between the Mininet and Open Daylight is going to be. Uh, we will also, you know, have our Mininets ready, set it up, and we will run the commands on Mininet to connect to the Open Daylight. And we will have the demonstration that how the virtual networking within the Mininet, how it will get presented inside the Open Daylight. So now to start with, let's go and start with uh, downloading the Open Daylight. Uh, go just going to my browser and browse to www.opendaylight.org. Uh, from here, uh, as you can see, the the latest version of Open Daylight, the fluorine, has been released. Uh, we'll go to the download side, and from here we can download the the versions of the Open Daylight. Now one small tip here is that. You know, this latest version of Open Daylight, uh, they don't have the maintained version of the web interface, the next uh, UI or the deluxe uh, web interface, which Open Daylight normally comes with. It has been uh, removed from the latest versions. And so just to make sure that we get the uh, the web interface on the, on the Open Daylight, we go to older versions and we will download the uh, the nitrogen version. So nitrogen version is 0.7.0. So this one, and uh, we will go for this one, uh, the tower file. So I just copy the location of this file uh, because I need to download it on this virtual machine, which is a different machine. And let's connect to, to this machine where we have here. So I just do a SSH to uh, to this to our ODL test machine, which is 192.168.211.113. I got the SSH keys, so I don't need to provide any login details. So I'm now just root at ODL113. Now, this is a CentOS version 7 uh, virtual machine, which I have already installed the, the Java deployment kit, the JDK. And let's download the file which we just copied. Now let's get this downloaded. Now. All right, so now as you can see, the file has been downloaded. So let's extract this file, which is this one, called tar xef. So the package is getting uncompressed. All right, so we got the graph folder here. Now to start the open daylight, we just could call the uh, from the bean folder within the craft, we call craft. 
So Craft is the wrapper over uh, the OSGI, as I know, and that provides us uh, some kind of user interface console to the OSGI uh, platform where the whole open daylight has been built in. I'll just give it a few seconds to start up. So the open daylight is based on the OSGI platform. OSGI is a modular platform created by, uh, I think, uh, you know, a few of the bigger organizations. And it supports loading and unloading of these different components, modulars, it's, it's complete modular. You can load and unload different modules and plug into the open daylight using the, uh, using the OSGI. Now, Croft is a wrapper over the OSGI's kind of uh, interface that, you know, we use, you know, for, for communicating with OSGI. But in general, this is how the, uh, open daylight and also the other steam control like Onos, you know, they are all set up and they work. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, what's happening on this machine. So I open another console, the same to the open daylight uh, machine. Let's, let's see what's going on. Uh, 211.112. Okay, so let's see. So while, okay, so as you can see, uh, our CPU cores are 100% utilized. So that is because of the Java. And uh, the Java is from, you know, uh, starting the open daylight, starting actually the OSGI and Graph. So we have to just need to give it some time for for the full startup of the, of the open daylight once it's compiled. All right, so now as you can see, the open daylight has been started. Uh, we can see this open daylight ASCII logo here, and this is the uh, the command prompt of the craft open daylight user at root. And here we are at this stage. Uh, let's have a look at what has happened. So as you can see, you know the the process loads has been kind of came down now. We are not highly utilized. Um, if I do a net stat dash pnl. Let's see what this server now is listening on. Uh, it's okay. So here we can see two processes from Java, actually three of them. So one Java process listening at TC ports 46.220. And we got another one on this board. And we have this one also on port number 8101. So this one actually is the, it's like a SSH connection. Uh, it's, it's like a SSH server console to the craft. So if we if you do SSH to this port, you can just, you will get here. You know, that's, that's, that's the same console. But as you can see, it doesn't listen on anything else. So there is no web interface, nothing is there. And from here, we have to start giving the commands to do the basic installation of the open daylight features. So here, for example, there are commands like, you know, feature. So feature, if you do the feature list, it gives you all the possible uh, components that you can install on the on this version of the open daylight the available packages which are packaged there within the open daylight within that package which, uh, which we downloaded but they are not activated okay so the first thing first uh, let's do some feature installation so the first one here I have put it here is the feature install open daylight layer 2 switch switch so this feature actually it installs the layer 2 software within the open daylight so open daylight you know by by default you know everything in sdn is a program right so layer 2 switch is a program which defines that hey if i receive a packet from this particular port and i know you know the destination mac address which i have learned already so i know how to forward it so this is a software which implements exactly the same logic of the very basic layer two switch so whenever a packet arrives at one of our you know standard uh, switch you know physical switch or virtual switch one of the ports with the odl the layer two switch component this this software it learns the mac address that it knows that hey this particular mac address has came from this physical port or virtual port so i'm going to learn that particular one uh, don't worry about these errors, you know, it's not uh, issues right now. Now, the second component which we are going to install is this one. So this is all the packages that, you know, installs the graphical user interface for us. So the Deluxe Core 
uh, and Deluxe apps, these are all these are all related to the uh, user interface of the Open Daylight. So Deluxe is the web interface of the Open Daylight. So with this command, we will install all of those features here. Okay. Now this may take a little bit of time. Uh, let's give it some time for uh, doing it uh, to the installation. All right, so now let's see how the installation was done. So here we don't have much processes and here we don't have anything. Uh, so the open the light has been restarted and I think all the modules has been loaded. So checking that, you know, if the those features which we install are working, let's do a test to call the net stat with NL. So we see the machine okay all right now as you can see the machine is now listening on more ports right so we got port number 6633 so 6633 tcp is a port for the open flow uh, server uh, so that open daylight uh, layer 2 switch module which we installed that's the software which is listening on port number 6633 uh, so the open flow switches they will be able to communicate with open daylight on this port and also we got port number 8181 which is the web interface the web gui deluxe web gui of the open daylight so we should be able to access the ADL from here on this port from the browser so let's get into our browser uh, we get a new tab here and we call 192.168.211.113 port 8181 and remember we have to put index HTML. Okay, ah, here we go. So this is the login page of the Open Daylights. Now we call we login with admin, username admin, and default password is also admin. Okay, and this is the basic user interface of the Open Daylight as you can see. So here in the left side, we got a few of these you can say applications uh, which we installed some Yang Visualizer, the Yang UI, Yang Man, and we got also the topology. So the topology uh, shows the, the topology which has been uh, with the, the open daylight actually can see. Uh, this probably as a default or it was in the cache uh, of the open daylight. So now what we are going to do, we are going to, uh, let's go back to our drawing, yeah. So we are going to start our mini net here and we will connect our mini net to communicate to the open daylight. And that communication, as you could see, that you know it will be open flow over the port number 6633 uh, on the open daylight. Okay. Now let's connect to our Mininet machine now. I uh, will open a new tab here and we do SSH as Mininet at sign 192.168.211. What's the last octet? The last octet is 55. So 55. Okay, the password of Mininet is Mininet. So you can download the Mininet from uh, from Mininet. I mean, uh, you can download it as just a virtual uh, appliance. You can load it on most of the supported uh, hypervisor. Um, download the Mininet. So you can just download the virtual image is what I have done. And you can run it on VMware, VirtualBox, KMO, KVM, and in my case, I'm running it on a Zen hypervisor. Okay, so this is what I have got, and let's go. So we got connected to our Mininet machine. So Mininet has a command called MN, which is the Mininet, and by default, it just runs, you know, very basic. Uh, we need to call Mininet to create a little topology for us. And we will connect it to our SDN controller, which is the open daylight. So once I call MN in Mininet and I specify the controller, which is a remote controller with the IP address of our open daylight, and we specify a tree topology with three uh, layers. Let me copy this command here. Okay. So what happened was creating a network, adding the controller, connecting to the remote controller, 6653. So it used port number 6653 to connect to the open flow server on the open daylight. It got connected. 
it created uh, eight virtual hosts within this server right now and it created also seven virtual switches and it also created these links between the virtual switches and also between the virtual switches and virtual hosts. So for example, switch one is connected to switch two, switch one is connected to switch five, switch two is connected to switch three, and for example here, switch three is connected to host number one. And so now we got eight machines. Uh, one of the important commands in Mininet is ping command. So we can use the uh, ping all command which makes a full mesh pinging between all the hosts. So what happened here was host one was able to ping host two, host one was able to kind of ping host three and all the way down to host eight to host seven. Now, if we go back to our open daylight and if I reload this, you see a new topology which has been loaded, right? So this is our current topology uh, which we have so we got different hosts so you see host number one host number sorry this, this is one host another host there is no specific number and these are all open flow switches which which are all loaded here so what happened was here in the mininet let me get another SSH to the mininet let's see what was happening there uh, SSH to mininet at 192.168.211.55 mininet let's just do a process list uh, so we got OVS DB server uh, virtual switch D uh, we got the mininet running in this machine as you can see if I do a uh, list of interfaces, you will see we got lots of uh, interfaces on this machine. You know, for for each switch, and also for you know, these are the virtual connections between the switches and you know, going to the uh, to those hosts. Okay. Okay, and also from the uh, the mini net, uh, we can call. Uh, OVS, OVS command. So OVS, uh, here we go. Virtual switch uh, controller. So if you call show, sorry, I have to call it with sudo. This command it shows us the virtual switches uh, which has been created within the mininet. So mininet uses some scripts to call uh, OVS to create all of these virtual switches. So here, for example, we got the bridge number seven. Bridge number seven is connected to our STN controller, uh, which is our open daylight, uh, the controller. And here it is saying that, hey, I got this port. So port number seven, Ethernet two, port number seven, Ethernet, uh, sorry, switch number seven, Ethernet three, and, you know, the other interfaces. We got another switch called you know switch four for example here and it got these different interfaces so everything uh, in in mininet is being implemented used with uh, with OVS and OVS is being connected to the uh, uh, to our open daylight now here uh, the reason that you know our hosts they were able to ping each other was just because we, we loaded the layer two switch inside our open daylight so if you remember when i when i added this feature the install obl layer two switch this command actually enables this whole uh, ping between all of our hosts so the ping all command here where we have all of the hosts are able to reach uh reach each other is just because the is just because of the layer two switch software, the, the module which we loaded on our open daylight. Um, in general, you know, open daylight has lots of lots of features and, and project within that. So we just loaded, you know, this basic layer two switch to show you that, you know, how, how this works. But here behind the scene also, if, we, if I do a packet capture, for example, on the open daylight uh, server, you will be able to see that there are lots of packets, the open flow packets coming from the mininet, uh, the open flow uh, packeting, for example, commands coming, uh, being sent to the open daylight. Hey, for example, uh, on the switch two, 
uh, let's say let's switch three when when we send the command from a ping command from the host one let's say to host two the first time you know the, the packet will arrive at switch three so host one will try to send the command send send the icmp packet to the host two but it will enter to the switch three now inside the switch three uh the logic inside the ovs switch it says that oh i got this packet is from host number one it is going somewhere that i don't know what should i have to do so it sends this packet back to the open daylight and open daylight it will pass that packet to the to the layer two switch module which we have loaded so then layer two module software then it knows that oh this packet has come from here let me find out you know where is the host number two and if host number two has got some information you know it has received some information from the other switches other virtual switches will be able to pass it through you know another switch so it will there for example if we are if this is the host one and this is the host two here the first time the packet will arrive at this switch and the open daylight will tell the switch hey you have to send this packet to the on this port which will arrive at the switch number two for example and once the packet comes here, again, this switch will ask Open Daylight, will say that, hey, I got this packet, it's going from this MAC address to this MAC address, I don't know what to do. And Open Daylight again programs this switch that, okay, you have to send this packet over this interface to the port switch number three. And the same happens here, where the packet finally ends into the to destination host. Um, you know, Open Daylight has lots of other uh, components and features. You know, the protocols, for example, you can run BGP, BGP, PSAP, you know, as a solid one protocol. Also, you have you have all of these uh, northbound APIs, which you can communicate with, with Open Daylight. You can extract all of this information as XML, JSON, or whatever else from the Open Daylight. So, and so this was all about our uh, today demo about the open daylight. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any question, please write your question in the forum or you can contact me directly if you need any more clarification or you need any specific uh, demonstration of a specific project inside the open daylight. Thank you.